Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello, and welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today's video takes us to the land down under, or better known as Australia, where a comedian decides to take a deep dive into what uh, sovereign citizens actually are, and it is very informative if you uh, are fairly new to the topic. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. What is a sovereign citizen? They're a very diverse group, loosely affiliated, not a tight-knit uh, group at all. They have one common thread, and that is they're opposed to government. They regard government as illegitimate, and having no authority over them. So they're like, you can't tell me what to do, you're not my real government, the stepdad defense. Yeah, that's an interesting way of putting it, the stepdad defense, you're not my real daddy, blah, blah, blah. I mean, yeah, uh, that could be uh, transplanted to their argument, it's for sure. It sounds fairly good. Yes, exactly. Sovereign citizens believe that laws only apply to them if they consent to them. So that's why they say stuff like, I do not consent. It's not true that a law doesn't apply to you if you don't consent to it. Australian courts have made this point many times. Marilyn seemed pretty sure about that. And these videos tend to end badly, especially for car windows. But maybe they successfully challenge their cases once they get to court? No. Who are you? This is my office and you're trespassing. I do not consent. Well, I was a magistrate for 22 years, and not only haven't they succeeded in my court, but nowhere in Australia have the sovereign citizen arguments succeeded. And it's almost the same way in the United States because their BS uh, arguments really don't stand up to legal scrutiny. Yeah, sure, sometimes the cases are dismissed, but that doesn't mean they've won. It just means the case can be reopened later should it be deemed necessary. And I'll have the wig too, please. They all get thrown out. But Sovereign Citizen websites have a whole page of testimonials where people from all states have successfully fought using their information and won. See, it's on their website. All of those testimonials are either false or the reported decisions simply don't exist. And I've looked for them. Are you trying to say to me that the Sovereign Citizen websites are bullshit? That's exactly the right legal term. So there's no chance that maybe you would have missed a case? Not or... a chance. Not in the Magistrates Court, not in the District Court, in the Supreme Court, in the Family Court, okay. in the AAT. Got it. Nowhere in any court have any of these arguments ever succeeded. And, you know, sovereign citizens also tend to bring up cases in the United States where they claim that it was on their side. But when you look it up and uh, start digging deep into the uh, case, it doesn't support what the sovereign citizen generally t is talking about. In fact, I've seen some that uh, that really have nothing to do with the situation they're in, but they still cite the case anyway. So where does the idea that people can just opt out of laws come from? It comes from a very idiosyncratic belief that you can separate the legal or corporate aspects of a person and their natural or living person. Sovereign citizens believe there is the living person, aka flesh and blood human being, aka you that came out of your mom, and the legal person, which is just an administrative concept only created when a government issues someone with documentation of the state, like, say, a birth certificate. Sovereign citizens believe that they can reject their legal personality and therefore laws don't apply to them and their natural living personality is unfettered by any of the restrictions that typically apply to all of us. Okay, and that's why they say this sort of thing. And I'm not property of the state, so you can't take me. It is my right as a living woman to do whatever I want. So can I, as a living person, do whatever I want? Of course not. No. Boring. Okay, so where do they get these ideas from? The idea that you can separate, you know, your personalities is idiosyncratic to sovereign citizens. If you go back in English legal history, we can look at slavery and can see, well, there we had a separation of legal personality and slaves being treated as property. I mean, that sounds like a legal basis to me. 
Well, it might have been 200 years ago, but it certainly hasn't been since. So I appreciate that you have a diploma in the rules or whatever. A master's in law. But did you know that the country, known formally as the Commonwealth of Australia, is registered in the US Securities and Exchange Commission as a corporation? It says it right here on the website. That's so that they can trade in exchange and shares and the like in America. That doesn't actually have any implications in terms of Australian law whatsoever. Well, all these Aussie sobtards tend to think that, but when you ask them for proof of their argument, uh, you get nothing out of them. You get the same old uh, gibberish. Like I said, nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing to back up their arguments. And I think you'll find, if your name is in all capital letters, like on, for example, your driver's license, uh, that refers to you as a legal person, which is why I have made an individual recognition card, um, which features my name in lowercase and hyphenated. Yeah, you know, I've heard that argument so many times and it's never held up in any court, anywhere. And if I attach one of these to my car, it refers to me, the living Lou, as a person who is travelling in private property, not driving, which means the police can't stop me or find me for any reason. The difference between driving and travelling is unknown in any Australian law. Uh, there were some really old common law rules relating to that in England back in the 15th and 16th century, but they haven't been in existence since then. What sovereign citizens offer is a fantastical, mythical version of the law that has no contact with reality. And I'm concerned that it exploits vulnerable people. People who see something on the internet, pay money for a script about how they should deal with police officers or why they don't have to pay income taxes. And ultimately, that's to their great disadvantage. Hang on a second. Is that exploiting or educating? Have you been doing your own research? Maybe. I think it's probably time for you to leave. Fine. I was just travelling anyway. I'm going to take this. Not going to lie, I was disheartened. Breaking free of the oppressive shackles of the Australian state sounded sweet. Back in the 70s, there was this guy called Prince Leonard who tried to establish his own micronation in Hutt River, Western Australia. He issued his own passports and made his own money. And if he can do it, then... He also got fined $3 million by the government for unpaid taxes. His micronation was never recognised by anyone. And even his own son told us, it is simply not possible to wake one day and decide that you do not agree with the laws of the land. It's over, Lou. Wrap it up. So there you go, Candace. According to law experts, the police, the courts, and even the descendants of Prince Leonard, sovereign citizens' claims have no legal basis. Happy? Good enough. And that was just the tip of the iceberg with these sovereign citizens that uh, even in Australia and the United States tend to have the same damn argument with really no variation whatsoever. I mean, you may hear something that sounds different, but it really comes down to the same old arguments and they really don't hold up in a court of law. So at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the, on the next one.